Good morning, folks. We've got geomagnetic storms from the solar wind impacts. We've got a look at volcanoes, solar forcing, the past disasters, and more confirmation of the galactic current sheet. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day was mostly quiet again, except for the bottom left. Incoming active region still popping again this morning as it turns in. The plasma filament on the north remains large and is directly facing Earth today. Let's stay stable up there, big guy. And we'll be watching that rope in the incoming active region as we should get visibility of any associated sunspots later today. Thus far, the two pops it has made yesterday and this morning both reached up into low C-class range on the X-ray flux. Both CMEs will miss Earth. Of course, we were expecting two impacts yesterday in the solar wind, and we did get them, driving a low-level geomagnetic storm that may reverberate a bit today. Interestingly, once again, it is SOHO data that is easiest to read. The small CME actually arrived first there, and then a density spike followed by the rise in plasma speed is the coronal hole stream on its heels. Geomagnetic conditions were pretty much precisely as expected from small consecutive impacts. So let's get a bit of aesthetics up next to transition away from space weather, and this is the Global Precipitation Missions look at Hurricane Nicholas via the Goddard SVS. It was a hefty weather burden as it rushed up through the Gulf, and GPM's instrumentation was able to dissect the storm, see what's going on inside. Quick note to jump into the articles, as the pre-volcanic CO2 release is now confirmed. There do remain issues like segregating those signatures from other non-volcanic releases, which do happen all the time, but alas, baby steps. Nice one up next, looking back over the Holocene temperature records and finding hemispheric differences in the forcing potential, but not enough variation to say it's not the sun controlling Earth's temperature over the last 12,000 years. The trend is indeed a bit stronger in the northern hemisphere, which makes sense because the south is ocean-dominated. Folks, in this beryllium study, they identify a number of the major climate events and indeed the known magnetic events in the past as well. But Gothenburg and the Younger Dryas are showing up as well as anything since before Toba, as well as Le Champ, hinting that indeed the last disaster was worse than the two that came before it, Lake Mungo and Mono Lake. Veteran observers, hopefully you recall, it doesn't appear that two super terrible cycles happen in a row, even if they're all terrible compared to normal which would mean the next one or two should be in the mid-range level of catastrophe if indeed Gothenburg and the Younger Dryas was such a bad one. Now last but not least, APS will be heading to where I grew up for this year's conference. The abstracts are out two months early as the meeting isn't until November, but it will include at least one major score for the galactic current sheet science. Not only have they observed the undulations, the peaks up and the valleys down, not only do we have a mechanism for it, we even now have mechanisms, here, for when the galactic current sheet appears to need help from its surroundings. The magnetic flux tubes they describe as cutting through the rippling current sheet, that's the interstellar magnetic fields, threading the sheet just like the sun's IMF threads the solar wind. And folks, it's both the sublime feeling that we once again get confirmation to know what's out there, and the anxiety of knowing it's coming. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.